Yeah, Missouri State was in this game. This isn't something where they tagged along. They led most of this game, and Coach Bob Petrino said right there how proud he is of these guys. Hello, everybody. If you're not convinced that the school sports season is upon us, well, this might be all that you need. I'm at Hammond Student Center where Missouri State is hosting their sneaker soiree. 38 to 21, this is a game of momentum. There was a running into the kicker penalty at the end of the first quarter that would have put the Bears offense back on the field. Instead, it gave the Salukis a first down. And after that, the Salukis go on to score 38 straight points. But it was no guarantee that MSU was even gonna be in the NCAA tournament this year after they dealt with some injuries and they struggled through their conference schedule. Yeah, and the Bears really didn't miss much today. Jalen Minette and Jamonte Black, they said they call each other the Splash Bros. Well, rightfully so. Those two and Prim each went for 15 today. That's a pretty good compliment to Isaiah Mosley. But if they wanna stay at the top or near the top of the Ozark Conference tonight is a big game for them. They're going to need a win to go to 2-1 and one instead of be 1-2 and two, because right now West Plains is undefeated. Camdenton is undefeated. As Paul mentioned, they beat Kickapoo last week, and Lebanon's undefeated right now. The last time they played a game on this field was also against UT Martin, but they lost in the FCS playoffs last November. And when I talked to Jason Shelley at the end of their game against Central Arkansas last week, he said this is a revenge game for them. But earlier this week, Bobby Petrino on Monday said he doesn't really believe in revenge. His team just needs to be better. On March 1st, 2001, Jackie Styles became women's college basketball's all-time leading scorer right here at Hammond Student Center at Missouri State. 21 years later, she's still under the spotlight this time as the main character in her own movie. Despite these two schools being about 10 miles apart and a lot of these kids knowing each other growing up, both of these teams are state ranked in class one and top contenders in district five. Well, watching the Gibbons siblings shoot from three, they make it look pretty easy. So I thought I'd give it a try to show you how hard it is to shoot from beyond the arc. And Mosley scores a lot. He's averaging more than 20 points a game and shooting roughly 50% from the field. So what makes him so good? He can score from anywhere, in any way. Just how special it was to actually clean up and play on this field, a place they once dreamt of playing in front of so many family and friends that came out to support them. Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols played their last regular season home game at Bush Stadium. Now during that game, Pujols hit home run number 702 and tied Babe Ruth for the second most runs batted in in baseball history. That number is 2,200 and 14. A familiar sight for NFL fans on Sunday night football tonight. The Kansas City Chiefs playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. Now just 20 months ago, that was the exact matchup and site of Super Bowl 55, a game that Chiefs Kingdom would like to forget. Many area basketball teams back on the court after the holiday weekend. The pink and white and the blue and gold tournaments kicked off in Springfield on Monday. Let's start with the blue and gold, the number one seed in the gold division, the Bolivar Liberators, playing the Aurora Hound Dogs. The Hound Dogs trying to go up early. Hayes Hoffman with a nice jumper, but then it's all Bolivar. Lucas Gabini getting the rebound and the putback. He scores 15 for the Liberators. And Kyle Polk, well, he's doing what Kyle Polk does. He does Kyle Polk things. He gets a steal. He goes a length of the floor. He's going to hammer a reverse dunk. Guy's got ups for two of his game high, 23. The one seed Bolivar advances 70 to 40. In the blue division, the Houston Tigers taking on the two seed Kickapoo Chiefs. In transition early at Zade Lowry to Braden Shorter, who gets the highest percentage shot in basketball. He goes up and gets it. Kickapoo jumps out to a fast 13 0 lead. Houston taking advantage of turnovers. Dakota James gets an easy bucket in the lay in on the other end. But dunks came from Santa this Christmas for the Chiefs. How about Lowry going up and slamming it down? Lowry goes for 12 and Kickapoo cruises 81 to 21. On OzarkSportsZone.com, it is your tournament headquarters. You can see brackets on there, but you can also see the schedule and who won the games. There's photos, there's videos, there's stats. The Cole Forbacher to Wyatt Andrews connection is years in the making. It's the second grade we've been playing at the YMCA, and then in middle school we started playing together. As, as high school went on, we just kept building and building this connection, and now, now everyone's just really seeing it, I feel like. Andrews is having a breakout season. Through two games, he has 30 catches for more than 400 yards. He's really stepped it up. I mean, it's hard to guard him. His routes, he's got it's the best route running I've seen out of anybody um, at a high school level. I mean, it's hard to guard. Put two guys on him, three guys on him, he's still going to find a way to get open. Another important part of his game is his gloves. I looked, I looked down at him 
pretty much every play, but especially when I score. I wear a glove. One of them, it says, Mama, this one's for you, and the other has a little heart on it. That's because this season is about more than just catches and yards. Wyatt is dedicating this season to his mom, an important figure in his life he lost after the district championship game last season in Lebanon. And on the ride home, she had a seizure, and it popped a blood vessel in her brain, which resulted in a brain bleed. So she was airlifted from Lebanon back to Springfield, and then she was in a coma for nine days and then ended up passing away. With a bigger purpose to play for, Wyatt has scored six touchdowns in his first two games. You know, he's always thinking about his mom. He scores these touchdowns, you know, for his team, for everybody. He scores them for his mom. And when I score, I just kiss him, point my finger up to the sky, and just think about her. You know, it means a lot for him. I think he's dedicated the season to her, I know, and I think he feels she's watching him, and, you know, she'd be his number one fan. Wyatt's number one fan may not be in the stands physically. It's been the first season of football with him without his mother. But she's never too far away. When I catch the ball, the first thing that happens, the ball touches my hand. So I knew, like, that's, how it, that's what it means to me, like my mom touching me. It means a lot for him to come to that idea, realizing that when that ball touched those gloves, it was from his, his mother would touch it first. And I'm very proud of him, and I know she would be proud of him. An example of strength that would make any mom proud. For KY3 Sports, I'm Jacob Sersosimo. Last winter, J.C. Fixon graduated early from Nixa and began her time with Missouri State Volleyball. I enjoyed it so much. It was just so nice, even if I was just, like, peppering back and forth. Like, I didn't even care what it was. But early prep for D1 Volleyball was suddenly stopped. I got there about two months. At the end of February, Fixon's mom gifted her a massage, something that may have saved her life. She went on a Saturday and the masseuse found a lump in her neck. So on Monday, we went to the doctor. On Tuesday, we were at um, Mercy. And on Thursday, we were diagnosed with Hodgkin's. It was pretty surreal. Fixin was diagnosed with stage three intermediate Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was very emotional. The freshman left her new team and returned home for treatment, coming back to campus every chance she got. Like, I knew I love volleyball, but it's just so much different when you're watching it from the sidelines. The loss of her favorite sport helped her fight life's biggest opponent. Something just clicked in her about after that first month of chemo that I'm going to I'm going to beat this. I'm going to come back. I'm going to start working out now. She spent three months receiving chemotherapy at St. Jude in Memphis, ending with the biggest win of her life. No! Shortly after, she returned to the court with a brand new outlook. You can't take anything for granted. Like, I remember thinking that I would take the absolute worst practice I've ever had right now than to be just sitting at home. I just want to have fun. I miss having fun on the court with, like, the people I love playing with. She's now back with the Bears, preparing for the upcoming season, working hard, but most importantly, healthy. She's on the court. She just had cancer not, you know, three, four months ago and she's playing. The waiting process is just hard. Like, I'm still waiting. I'm not 100% back yet at all. I'm confident that she'll get back where she was and be better than that. And again, I think that comes back to her competitive spirit. A true competitor on and off the court. For KY3 Sports, I'm Jacob Sersosimo.